Yeah, exactly. Cool. So thanks to everybody for uh, sticking it out so late. Uh, we'll try and keep this uh, succinct so we can go to map to uh, Stam, excuse me, and get a drink. Um, anyway, so we're going to be talking about a project called Open Urban, which is a community map and wiki focused on proposed urban development. And we're going to be talking about the ways in which uh, we can share data back and forth between uh, Open Urban and OSM uh, and collaborate. Um, so just to give a little background about who we are, my name is Reed Ducey Gibbs. I'm a 2013 Code for America fellow. Um, and my background is in urban studies and architecture, although over the past couple of years I've gotten uh, more involved in web development. Um, so I guess I would say I'm an urbanist becoming a technologist, whatever those words mean. And, and I'm CJ O'Brien. I'm also a 2013 Code for America fellow. And I've been a software developer for the last few years. And I guess this year I'd start calling myself an urbanist. Um, I, I've always kind of been curious about how we interact with cities and how we explain that. So, um, and so as you guys all know, OpenStreetMap is a, a collaborative uh, effort to map the world as it is. Um, and we took a similar sort of model with Open Urban, but we decided to map the world as people think it should be, to look at uh, people's plans and aspirations for their space um, and do it in a, in a similar format. Um, and you might wonder, why are we doing this and what does that actually look like? So to give you an example, um, if you've been paying attention to current events, um, there's a proposal in Istanbul to replace uh, a park um, in the center of the city with a mall, and that created a tremendous amount of controversy. Um, and that's actually one of the first projects that we uh, started following when we launched the beta of this site um, this past October, um, just collecting information and explaining to people what exactly is going on um, in their cities and neighborhoods. Um, so to begin with, uh, we started making Open Urban because we think cities are made by the people who live in them. Um, and uh, fundamentally, um, we think um, more and more technology allows people to interact with the way their spaces are shaped in a collaborative way. And so we're trying to look at uh, the potentials that those provide. Um, and at the same time, obviously, cities are growing incredibly quickly. Um, this is pretty obvious probably to this group. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you know this is happening. But um, we think it's important to uh, just state because it informs how we're, how we're doing what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and also, this growth occurs in ad hoc ways. And this is both sort of the informal ad hoc growth of uh, a favela, let's say, but we also define ad hoc um, as the giant infrastructural project that isn't really paying attention to its context and is just sort of dropped in without any understanding about relationships. Um, and so a lot of times um, planners and designers are designing for things that will change before their project is actually completed. So what they actually design for is oftentimes not very relevant. Uh, and that's a problem. So needless to say, it's really hard to connect the dots. You have things moving really quickly at huge scales, um, and people need to communicate better. Fortunately, uh, there's lots of possibilities. Um, and that's actually probably one of the reasons why things are changing so quickly is because we can communicate at such uh, speeds. Um, but we're really proposing um, using networks as a way to better understand and address uh, our urban spaces. Um, so Open Urban is sort of developed a, like Maslow's hierarchy of urban um, information and empowerment, I guess I would say. So uh, to begin with, we think mapping is really important. Um, and. Uh, understanding the spatial relationships within cities um, is just sort of like the baseline um, uh, need. 
And then on top of that, another incredibly powerful way for understanding cities is through narrative. Um, and so um, adding these narratives onto maps um, really makes things contextual and relevant to people. It's not just points on a map, it's a story, it's a history. Um, and then on top of those is discussion. Once those sort of um, narratives and spaces have been defined, um, what are people's values and opinions? Because this is a type of data and information as well. Um, and we don't specifically, like, we're not specifically trying to promote collaboration, but we think um, all of the other things I mentioned sort of create a foundation that leads to more effective collaboration. Um, I think there's lots of projects that have attempted to, like, uh, make a prescribed collaborative um, platform, and that's really, really difficult. Um, so our sort of approach is to uh, give people good information and let people create it themselves, um, and hopefully that leads to more collaborative efforts. Um, so the project was started in Istanbul um, this past year. Um, I was uh, studying there on a Fulbright grant. I was talking to a lot of uh, my friends who are architects, and we were just overwhelmed by the amount of change going on in the city, um, and we decided to do something about it. And so the, at the beginning, we really just wanted to see what uh, changes were happening in a, in a very sort of specific and concrete way, what changes were proposed. Um, so you'll see on the left, this is sort of the um, plan that's accessible by the municipality's website, and it's like not very helpful for actually telling people what's going on in their neighborhoods. So we started making this map just of, you know, these specific projects. So on the, the bottom right is like a port that's being redeveloped, and the upper right is the, the Taksim project that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we basically wanted to connect the dots between all of these projects and things that were going on that we were seeing and not seeing or hearing from other people and we wanted to know more about them. Um, so that's connecting projects to projects, understanding relationships between those two things, connecting people to projects, like what's going on in your neighborhood, and then people to people, you know, having more discussions about these uh, these developments. Um, and, and sort of our like grand plan is to develop a user-generated collection of urban plans worldwide. Um, and that's uh, a bit sort of audacious, um, but people have dreamed crazier things before. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand it off to CJ. He's going to talk a little bit about some examples and also um, sort of logistical and technical stuff uh, about how we think we could possibly collaborate with OpenStreetMap. Yeah, so we're, we're embarking on this project of trying to map kind of like the space around us as it might exist in the future. And of course, like there's, there's plenty of places in the world that are changing very rapidly. Um, and we, we, could, we could try to map the world right from the get-go. But um, we've decided that we're going to concentrate on a, on a few places kind of at first and really kind of uh, work out some of the kinks on a, on a smaller scale. I mean, not to say that Istanbul, Seattle, or New York are, are small in particular, but they're certainly smaller than the world. So the, the reason that we chose three, these three places um, are all because they're, they're pretty closely related to the project. So uh, the city of Istanbul, certainly Reed and his fellow architects were living there and really trying to like make sense of like how fast the city is changing, right? And like trying to get some kind of actual like meaningful information about how to build buildings in that space that's changing so rapidly and being able to kind of like get other people in there and add their information about new things that maybe even the city is lagging behind on publishing. Um, and then the city of Seattle is where Reed's from and where Reed grew up. So certainly uh, we've all, we all try to understand the places that we've spent the most time and Seattle was kind of a natural draw there. So t taking information that the city put out about new developments and um, the things that companies were proposing. And then also in, in New York City, we've, uh, we've been importing a lot of data and, and trying to like, map things in that city, um, mostly because we were a part of the uh, Ideas City Festival um, pretty recently. And, and we were going there to kind of like 
just kind of sh talk to people who are interested in how cities are changing and developing. And we wanted to demonstrate this tool and really put a lot of information in there and let them know how we can kind of map these spaces that they might not be too sure about. I mean, certainly I, I was staying there with a friend of mine and she was asking like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this apartment building down the street from me. So we, we were trying to describe that in New York there. Um, and one example of the projects we have up on the site is the, the Atlantic Yards development in Brooklyn, which is this absolutely ginormous development that's changing the landscape of these like very old um, neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Um, it's certainly like a, uh, a, a large like, kind of like token as to how Brooklyn is changing very quickly. Um, and it, it's certainly been like, uh, it, it's been very fraught. Um, like the, the, even the Brooklyn borough president um, wasn't a huge fan of this project. And uh, certainly with the New Jersey Nets um, becoming the Brooklyn Nets and uh, community groups all along not, not really feeling their, their voice heard uh, in the creation of this project really kind of spoke to the need for um, an information repository like this to kind of catalog who's involved in this project, who are the architects, who are the funders, really like who's kind of pulling the strings behind this kind of stuff. Um, and really a, a little bit more apropos um, given the current um, state of Istanbul is kind of the history of the Taksim military barracks. And this kind of changes from actually like documenting buildings and, and space and really talking about kind of the history behind space. So um, if you want to understand like what, what things are being built in places, we need to understand kind of the history behind that. And certainly, like um, the current protests in Istanbul around Taksim Square are hyper-political, and the prime minister came out and started talking about how um, he was going to re-erect the, the military barracks and how um, people didn't understand the history behind this space. Um, and actually, so uh, some of Reed's friends came on and said, "Hey, actually, there's a, there's a deeper history behind this that even the prime minister isn't acknowledging." and and this is an exploration of that. So trying to provide that space for people to explore, even, even like the, just that deeper narrative context and not just uh, building, building outlines. So kind of like part of this comes from, we're, we're really thinking about this relationship of, of data exchange between the people who are looking at the land um, as it exists currently and um, the people who are trying to create the land as it'll exist in the future. And, and historically that's been surveyors and planners. Um, and, Certainly, if you're if you're walking around with a with an analog transit, um, taking a look at the land, writing down your paper in a notebook, and you hand that off to a planner later or in an architect, um, it's it's pretty slow. It's one way. Um, you you take a look, you survey your ground, and then you go back to the office and you you lay it out and you build your building. Um, and there's no real exchange. There's no continuity. There's no kind of conversation about the space. Um, so two people can build very similar buildings right next to each other um, and probably, and there's the opportunity to not really talk about it. So um, we're, we're living in the future a little bit. Um, we've got connected devices in our hands, um, uh, on our desks. Uh, we've got the ability to kind of survey digitally and we also have the, the ability to plan digitally. Um, and that really kind of opens this, this space for us to be able to exchange that information much more quickly uh, and, and really talk about like, what, what developments are being built right now, what are they going to look like in five years, and if my project is looking for completion in three years, then like, how, how does this project fit into that entire context? And really, kind of like digital means help that happen faster. So if these are, if these are abstract examples, um, we kind of think that OpenStreetMap and OpenUrban are kind of the, like the, the more concrete examples of how these, these projects um, manifest themselves in, in the current day. So, um, OpenStreetMap, again, is kind of like this canonical representation of our physical reality, right? You can walk down the street and the street exists on the map and that is what is correct. But when you're kind of like speculating on what will exist in the future, um, that's not really the place that OpenStreetMap tries to fill. So certainly, um, if, if people were merging change sets with proposed buildings in there, that, that, that certainly wouldn't make any sense. And, wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a service to the community. So we think open urban can be a place for people to do that, to say, hey, okay, like, this is maybe what my building would look like. This is what, uh, what like a quick render would be. And here's a place to get some feedback from people. So certainly we're, we're at this kind of intersectionality between the realities and the plans. And, and what actually is the intersection here? Like, what, what is the concrete intersection between these two projects? And we think that that intersection is construction data. So at some point, um, these proposed projects actually get funding. Uh, there's a building plan. There's a permit taken out. 
and somebody's actually going to start digging a hole and like pouring a foundation. And then that goes from actually from like a plan from a proposal to actually existing as like a hole down the corner from you. And you, you want to know about that on the actual map in reality. So this is kind of how this is how OpenStreetMap represents a um, a, uh, a transit bridge in Istanbul. Um, of course, I mean this in the new ID editor looks familiar to all of you. Um, and this is kind of how we're representing that same construction data in Open Urban. Um, so, and as these projects kind of pass from the planning stage and kind of the proposal stage and kind of like the metting out the kind of the thorny details, um, we think that we can kind of be this mediating layer. We can kind of absorb kind of like that like funny shock and flux that we want to have. We want to have that conversation. We want to have people making messes on our website. Um, and kind of like tooling with the urban terrain. But when that kind of like comes to fruition, we want to be able to pass that on to people who make, make use of this stuff, right? Um, if we're capturing it, we don't want that to go to waste in the future. Um, so it, we've kind of been thinking about a few mechanisms that we can make use of um, to provide this data back to the OpenStreetMap community. And the first of that is, the, is using the OSM Notes API. Um, so we, we wanted to start kind of light. Um, and the Notes API is a really great lightweight interface to be able to tell OpenStreetMap users that, hey, we have this information. This thing exists. Um, people are talking about it. Um, kind of so it's, its history as, as OpenStreetBugs um, definitely lends it to, to be more seen as kind of like, a, like a, a bug reporting tool. Like, hey, there's a problem here. Um, and our use case is a little bit different, um, which is more like, hey, like it, there's something here that you, we, you might not know about yet, but we know a lot about. Uh, and if you want more information on that, we, we have this information. And we're really only thinking about this in relationship to construction data and to things that actually exist um, and not so much to proposed plans. So the idea wouldn't be that open urban users would be saying like, oh, hey, there's all kinds of like fun proposed developments here. Um, it would be more in the, in the vein of, hey, like, this is actually happening. This is like being created. And we think this is useful. Um, and kind of a more heavyweight option that it certainly is in the realm of possibility is uh, change set creation and actual export to OpenStreetMap. Um, certainly imports are, are hard to do. Uh, it's pretty, um, definitely not like something that we want to take uh, to, to a cavalier attitude, um, but it's definitely something that we, we could certainly provide, um, build, build that XML and allow people to upload that to OpenStreetMap. Um, and kind of some further thinking that we have is looking at even like extending the notes API. So can we provide any kind of like rich metadata around notes? Can we provide possibly key value stores on notes to provide um, kind of like URL links, some sort of like semantic link there that we can be able to like tell people um, with the, like that kind of like take the, 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 the lightweight mechanism that notes kind of engenders with um, maybe like more semantic information there. So these are kind of things that we're, like, we're starting to think about as we work on the site more. Uh, and we're certainly excited to be able to provide this data and like, work with the OpenStreetMap community and talk about how like, these two projects kind of butt up against each other. Um, so this has been us kind of just giving you guys a, a look at Open Urban and what we're thinking about in terms of uh, the shape of our, shapes of our cities and um, where we kind of come together on, on the data front. So. Um, if anybody has any questions? Good. Yeah, no, I think we're definitely interested in both of those things. I mean, we're interested in, in projects that have sort of like a lot of momentum around them from development, but we also see this as a tool that can sort of like level the playing field in some ways. So like a community organization could propose a project and it would have just as much standing on the site as some, you know, half billion dollar development. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, that's something we've been thinking about. Um, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a, a tag that we have is like redevelopment versus new development. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something, you know, it's just really up to the community and the city to like, 
if they if that's something they think is important for people to know about, then that's an option. Um, yeah, we actually were talking, I think I was talking to Alyssa Wright and, uh, about, um, open cities and the hot team and using this as a way, um, to be sort of more proactive about, um, projects that might be in disaster zones as opposed to mapping things that exist in disaster zones. You could look look into the future and say like, hey, this is actually not a great place to build this type of building or like you really need to be looking at uh, these because they're in, you know, a flooding flooding area. Um, so yeah, definitely. Are you, fr are you from New Zealand yeah. by any chance? Yeah, yeah okay, actually, and I, there was another, um, conversation I had with somebody about uh, Christchurch, is it, where the earthquake was? Yeah. Yeah, like we, we had had a conversation about that. So yeah, it's definitely something we've been thinking about, but it's sort of, you know, as you guys know, like building community takes time um, and definitely like we're trying to focus on a couple of core cities and build like a critical mass. But um, if people are interested in like bringing this project to their community, definitely get in touch with us. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, part of our hope with this is that um, it doesn't just become like a documentation of of like developer and real estate projects, um, and that it has uh, maybe some sort of like. WikiLeaks aspect of it, and there's actually quite a few sites like Skyscraper City that people will, uh, people in the industry will like uh, leak things or discuss internally like what's going on and what proposals are like coming out. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, we don't just want it to be like, this project is done and it's gonna like change the city and you have no say about it. Um, Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, if and, and basically, like, if people want to make proposals about how those things should be changed, that's definitely something that's like welcome, and uh, we would love to have that sort of content on the site. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think like we really want to curate it to towards proposals and, and, and actions that people want to see or things that people want to see um, come to fruition. Um, so if it's just something that exists, like, you know, there's a thousand 
vacant abandoned properties in South Bend, Indiana, which is actually the city I'm working with, with Code for America. Like, um, if, if it's just the, the abandoned houses, um, like that's definitely something that can be in, op in uh, open street map, but if people want to actually do something about that, that's the type of thing that would be in open urban. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll apologize if I, if I made it seem as if we don't want there to be a discussion about these developments on the site. I mean, that's, that's certainly, that's exactly what we want to, what we want there to happen. We want, really, like, we want to be able to power a dialogue, um, certainly more so than, than something that you see wheat pasted up on, on a piece of plywood when you walk down the block. Um, really just more information and more, more real, like, dialogue about this kind of stuff. And definitely when you're talking about, like, some, like, Really, how can we power analysis in the future about these spaces? Really, like if we like once we have more information, and if we can do some kind of, if we can power like transparent analysis about these proposed developments, and really be able to give those numbers to people, um, then then really I think we would see that as a as a big plus. So if, if the Yeah, definitely. That's, um, I think, where we would like to see this go in the future is um, having all of this, uh, these like changes and connections, you know, like you can see how many projects XYZ developer has made in this, this uh, city or neighborhood and like what's happened with them and um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think uh, that really depends on the context. Istanbul, for example, like it would probably be a lot of work and probably some political change, but other cities like uh, San Francisco or Seattle where they have a strong history of community-oriented planning, um, relatively speaking, um, like it's, I think it's more of a possibility, and that's definitely something we're looking to grow the project in the future um, and make it more sustainable is integrate it with community planning um, processes. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks. Thanks so